Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, our special guest is Mercedes Torres. Mercedes works under the Epic Real Estate umbrella for Cashflow Savvy. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, Mercedes? No, that's it. Epic Real Estate is the name of the business. Cashflow Savvy is the turnkey portion of our business. So thank you for having me, Glenn. Sure. Cashflow Savvy is under the Epic umbrella. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about how the whole thing together sort of works. How it got started and how it works. Got yeah. it. So Epic Real Estate is, is really the, the name of our business. We originally started off as an education company. Um, we teach people how to create um, or how to become real estate investors. And just by accident, we became, um, uh, we included uh, the turnkey portion of our business called Cash Flow Savvy. So there's Epic Real Estate Investing, and that's where we teach you how to become a real estate investor. And then for those people that don't want to learn how to become a real estate investor or really don't have time, there's the turnkey portion available called Cashflow Savvy. And that's where we pretty much do everything with you. We, uh, we walk you through the whole process, um, but we really find a house for you, we fix it up for you, we place tenants in there for you, and most importantly, we collect rents and we make sure that you get rents every 15th of the month. Um, and then there's another portion of our business called the Epic Wealth Fund. That's for uh, the more seasonal and, or not seasonal, but the more seasoned investor uh, that is accredited. Right. So three portions to our business, all under the Epic umbrella. We have the education portion, we have the turnkey portion, and then we have the hedge fund portion where you invest in the company to become a real estate investor. What, uh, what markets are you all in? So we are, uh, we're actively in 10 markets. And when I mean actively in 10 markets, we have a physical presence. And Matt and I, uh, Matt Terrio is the brains behind our business. Um, we started the business in 2008. And the way we started is we were investors ourselves. So we are in um, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati, Ohio, Indianapolis, and Maryville, Indiana. We are in St. Louis and Kansas City, Missouri. Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Now, out of those 10 markets, although we still have a physical presence and we're constantly investing, our stronger markets are Birmingham, Alabama, um, St. Louis and Kansas City, Missouri, Cleveland, Ohio, and Indianapolis and Maryville, Indiana. So those are our hot markets just because they're producing a higher return for our clients and we'll tap into that throughout the midst of this podcast. Let's well, just talk about your same as cash option that you uh, you provide. Yeah. So uh, it, let me preface in, in, in kind of just sharing a little bit about how the business started because yep. I think it plays into a lot as to why Cashflow Savvy has become so successful. So when Matt and I started this business, um, we are real estate investors ourselves. And it's important that I point out that Matt and I live in Los Angeles, California. We have 87 rentals, but not one of them are here in Southern California. Now we live where we want to live and we invest where it makes sense. Now, we want to live in the area where there's sunshine and water 365 days a year. And, but we realized that living out here, we were not going to be able to cash flow the way we wanted to. So um, we started investing, um, living in Los Angeles, we started investing in Memphis, Tennessee, in Danville, Illinois, and other markets because we realized that we were able to produce a return there cash flow mm -hmm. where I wasn't able to do that here in California. Now we started this business right around the turn of the market. So uh, before that, Matt and I were fixed and flippers. He was a wholesaler. He was also a real estate agent. So it was easy for us to produce a return. And yes. when the market shifted, there's just no way in the world. I mean, I couldn't get a cash on cash return whatsoever. So I had to find markets in middle America where, um, I knew there was cash flow. I just didn't know where. 
So back in the day, we created a proprietary algorithm. This was like 2007, 2008, where we knew that we were going to be able to produce a return for our money. Here in California, it was very difficult to do. Uh, it was almost non-existent. Um, and I just knew that there were markets in middle America where I, I knew our money was going to work for us. So that's when we started um, investing abroad. And, and what ended up happening is that people got word, okay, you guys are living in Los Angeles and you're investing in the Midwest and in the South. So it took a minute for people to understand what we were doing, but they were asking us to speak at all of these groups where, um, you know, meetup groups, RIA groups, we loved it, but there was only two of us doing it and we couldn't get to all the invitations. So we created um, our course called the Epic Pro Academy and it really teaches people what we were doing and what we do now in our office every single day. It's, I've been told, now I'm a little biased, but I've been told our course is one of the most comprehensive courses. But the reason I share this is because so many of our clients listen to uh, our podcast because we also have a podcast but they would listen to the information that we were giving on our podcast and they would say well how do i learn how to do it so we would sell them the course yep. and the course was only 97 dollars, but it was really i mean it taught you everything um people would go through the whole course and then six weeks later we'll call our office and say mercedes this is too much work i don't want to do it i don't have time to do it can you just sell me one of your properties so I did. I had at the time probably 45 rentals. So I sold one. The next month I sold two. The month after that we sold five. And then Matt sold 10. And I about killed the guy. Yeah. And I was like, you're not allowed to sell my cash flow. But I realized there was a demand. Yep. So what it taught me was busy professionals just like you and I, Glenn. I mean, we're out hustling every day with our own business. Yep. And I thought, okay, let me just sell you one of the properties in my market that I would have bought for myself anyway. Yep. So by the time the cash flow savvy started, we already had set criteria. And that criteria was based out of our personal um, criteria that we created for ourselves for that strong return. Because I knew in California, I wasn't gonna get it. I had to go find it in other markets. So it ended up working really well for my clients because I already had three years of a proven system where I had acquired 40 rentals for myself. Why was it going to work for you when I was just letting you uh, guinea or what is it, um, piggyback <laughs> off the team? Yeah, off the team that I had already established. Now we had enough properties and we had enough skin in the game to um, verify that first of all, all of our systems were working. The criteria that we had set was working, but more importantly, Glenn, our teams were working for us. So we learned quickly that the most important aspect of our cash flow was our property management and our maintenance team. Because I tell you, buddy, you can have the best property on the block. If you don't have a property management team that's going to place a paying tenant, it doesn't matter how great your property is, you're not going to be able to produce a return. And we learned that three years before we started Cash Flow Savvy which is why it was it has been so successful simply because the system is already proven yeah and allows people to leverage your team and the system that's already set up that's exactly right and you know i i have to say and i'm so grateful that because we operate in volume and and i'll preface in saying that we're not huge we only do about maybe 15 20 properties a month and i am very happy to say that that's all i do because every one of those properties are not only carefully chosen by our amazing acquisitions team, we have an awesome management team in each of our markets. And by the time you pick up one of our properties, it's almost already producing for you because I already did all the work for you up front. Yeah. And the beauty of it is that my team doesn't know if Matt and I are gonna keep that property for ourselves or if I'm gonna sell it to someone like you, Glenn. Yeah. They just know that it meets the criteria it's an epic property and whoever gets it, gets it, but I already have the system to know that it's working. So this is why I'm blessed to say that our typical client buys 3.2 properties a year and they refer 1.8 clients to us a year. 
Now, it's kind of weird that I have those numbers down to a T, yeah. but I do know advertising. It's all word of mouth, and it's really our clients coming back to buy more. In fact, I was just sharing, um, I was interviewed on another podcast last week, and I didn't realize that one of my clients happens to be um, the customer service representative at AT&T, which is a, a major phone company here in, in Los Angeles. Yep. And um, he came on board uh, about five years ago. I've sold him, I've done his portfolio. He now has 11 properties. But I realized I've served 14 people on his customer service team. <laughs> he tells one of his employees, then his employees tells an aunt and an uncle and a cousin. And it's great because I've managed to get them all in the same area. So this entire customer service team has properties across the United States and they're all in the same zip code ballpark, same area. Wow. So it's a proven system that worked for me. So why wasn't going to work for our clients? Now, I've perfected it throughout the years. Uh, the market is shifting. I see a dwindling return. I see interest rates going up. So I factor all that in as the market continues to, to, ch to change, to shift. And I'm really careful about that when I have a conversation with anyone that, that tries to do business with us. I'm super clear about it because I've been that person where I bought an asset thinking it's going to perform a certain way and then yep. the market changes and so does the number that ends up in your bank account. So I'm super careful about that. Let's go back to the, our original question. Let's talk about some of the, the products you have. Let's talk about the let's start with the same as cash. Oh, same as cash offer. So I went on before I went on my tangent. No, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I started my same as cash program um, is simply because I saw that there was a demand. Many of our clients are overseas clients, like your listeners. Yep. Um, we have clients from uh, Russia, China. Um, we have clients, Mexico even, uh, all, all over the world. And they would call our office to buy a property and we're kind of forced to buy a property in cash. Now we're big proponents of creating wealth. And one of the ways you create wealth is by leveraging as much as possible without over leveraging yourself. But our overseas clients, they couldn't qualify for a bank loan. Yep. So because I was holding a substantial amount of inventory that I was able to diversify my own portfolio, we started to offer seller financing. And what I realized that after you own a property for 12 months here in the United States, you create a credit or a track record. It's called seasoning uh, in, in America. And then you are able to draw money against that. So I created my 18-month same as cash offer because you buy the property with 50% down. And it's 50% down. Uh, interest only at a 9.95%, but everything that you pay towards the interest for 18 months, I will apply towards the principal. So if on the 18th month, you get a cash out refi, which 95% of my clients do, everything that they paid me for interest goes right off of the actual um, uh, amount that is due. So I apply it towards the principal. It's worked out really, really well for my foreign clients because after 12 months, you can create a, an American stance, so to speak, yep. and then you become lendable. And yep. it's worked out really, really well. Yeah, you're able to show a payment history because you set them up with a note company and you, it'll show that you've made payments on time, you had no penalties, and that people are more interested to lend to you. Right. Now, I will preface in saying those properties are not available every day in our queue. Uh, they're actually sparingly available because we have to own those properties in some shape, way, or form for at least my track record is I like to own them for six months. Um, I prefer to own, own them for 12 months. So they come out slowly. They're only available a few properties a month. I have a waiting list, um, mostly of my Canadian clients, thanks to your podcast. But they're available um, sparingly, not like our other properties on our queue that are available on a daily basis. You just mentioned the queue a couple times. Maybe we could talk about how your queue is different than the other turnkey operators. 
my clients tell me that no other turnkey out there has a queue system, but I'll, I'll tell you all about the queue and the reasoning for our queue. So our queue is basically um, you open escrow to see our available inventory. But the reason we did it, Glenn, is because what I found throughout our you know 10 years in operation is the two biggest mistake our newbie investors make is number one, they pay too much for the property. And number two, they don't do enough due diligence on the property that it ends up being a huge problem somewhere down the line. So when I created Cashflow Savvy, I decided to eliminate those two things off the bat. I'm really big on mitigating as much risk as possible. So our cue is when I send you a property, it's for your eyes only, you get a property for 24 hours, the price is the price, there is no bidding on it, and it's yours for 24 hours, nobody can take it from you. That way, I eliminate the bidding war, because we're never gonna sell you a property that's over market value. It usually gets verified with an appraisal. And number two is, when I sell you that property and when you see it, you have a whole day to do any type of basic due diligence. And I do say basic because when you say that you want the property, we then send you a contract and you get a full on 10 day inspection period. So I purposely created the queue for that reason. Now. There's two ways to get into our queue, or actually there's two barriers, so to speak. Number one is you have to show us either proof of funds or an approval letter from the bank to show that you are qualified to purchase one of our properties. And number two is you have to wire $2,500 directly to escrow. It's fully refundable at any time, but it places you into our queue in the order in which you've opened escrow. So let's just say you open escrow tomorrow and you're number 10 in the queue, then all the properties that come in on any given day go to investor number one in the queue. Whatever that investor receives, he has 24 hours to make a decision. And if he doesn't like the properties, he can pass on those properties and tomorrow or the next day he'll get more. Some days the investor will get one or two properties, other days you'll get four properties. Other days you won't get any, it's a queue, it's whatever becomes available. But you start moving up in the queue as people start to buy properties. So it's very common that you're number five in the queue on you know Monday, and on Friday you're number one in the queue. And you know, it's important to keep in mind that different people pass on properties for different reasons. Some of the people in our queue only want properties in Memphis, for example. Yep. Or other people can only qualify for an $80,000 property, so they pass on everything else. So yep. there's different reasons why people pass, and people say, oh, well, I'm number 15 in the queue. I'm going to see the bottom of the barrel. No, it moves relatively quickly because we sell so many properties. Right. Uh, yeah. Excellent. How do your properties do against the 1% rule? Or is that still applicable? <laughs> it, you know, it, right now it kind of is um, because uh, we're still in that uh, era where we're still buying in bulk. We have an amazing acquisitions team and we've been doing this for a minute. So yeah, the one, one and a half percent rules applies. A lot of it, I've heard a 2% rule. That doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> You're but, in a war uh, zone if you do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I stay away from war zones. But yeah, we're, we're right up there with the 1% rule. And quite honestly, at the end of the day, what I have found is just through experience, those properties that perform really well on paper, I've been able to prove time and time again, they always don't perform as well in real life. And that's because there, you know, what you just said, a lot of those properties are in war zones or in inner cities where I just refuse to invest in because I have too much experience and I know better. Or they <laughs> may just have a high turnover, so you end up spending, wasting a month every year with an empty place. Exactly, exactly. Um, You know, when we created our proprietary algorithm, one of the things that we were able to extract that has helped us tremendously is uh, Matt created an algorithm based on um, medium family size, medium household income in certain areas because we wanted to focus on areas where there was going to be no shortage of tenants. So I am in areas right in the middle of the road, so to speak, where 
Uh, I know the purchase price and the rent ratio are going to bring us a strong return. But more importantly, I'm in areas where I know people could afford to rent, but they can't necessarily afford to buy. So I stay away from that lower rent and I stay away from that higher rent. I'm in that sweet spot where I know I'm never going to have a shortage of tenant because even if the market switches or turns for the worse, I'm always going to have tenants in that sweet spot, no matter what. How do you feel about uh, people closing with financing? I love it. I encourage it, actually. Um, I have lots of people that say to me, you know what, I have $50,000 in an IRA or an old 401k. Can I buy one property? And the answer is yes, you can buy a $50,000 property. I don't sell $50,000 properties because they're in inner cities and they tend to be in areas where I don't particularly care to work uh, just because the caliber of the tenant is a little bit lower. But I would say to my client, hey buddy, instead of buying one property at 50,000, that's gonna bring you perhaps a 12, 13% return, why don't you buy two properties, each bringing you an eight to 10% return but now you have two properties with bank financing. Yep. For our foreign investors, I try to find those seller finance properties where you're still able to, to buy two properties or almost two properties with 50,000. But I'm a big advocate of leveraging as much as possible yep. without over leveraging yourself. And having more properties with leverage, it sort of diversifies your risk. You're not like, if you have one vacancy, you're 100% vacant, but if you can move it into multiple properties, it, it doesn't crush you. You said it beautifully, because that's exactly it, yeah. With my property that I purchased from Cashflow Savvy, just to throw some numbers out for people who are interested, uh, I purchased for $72,000. I did the same as cash that we talked about. Um, the uh, rent is $900 per month. It Cash flow is about between 300 and 350 with the uh, the note financing on there at 9.95%. But at the end, I'll basically be getting between 600 to 650 whenever I uh, finance out of it in a year. And yeah. uh, that's for people who are interested in how it all works. And uh, you know, with the the pressure on the market that she just spoke about, ideally it should be worth uh, more than I got to. So whenever I do the refinance on it, it I should be able to walk away with 100% of my money that I put in at the end of the 18 month period. Yeah, that's about right. Now, that's not always the case. I know, for I know. <laughs> um, but that's very close to what we offer. And you know, you picked up your property several months ago. I will say the market has changed. but. Those numbers are very doable, and I designed this program so it can be a win-win for our overseas investors. Uh, Mercedes, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you to uh, buy a property or get some more information, how, what would be the best way to do so? Well, they can always contact you because you're always very nice and send an yes. introduction email. But if you wanted to reach me directly, uh, my email is mercedes at epicrealestate.com. Mercedes spelled like the car, and Epic is E-P-I-C, Mercedes at EpicRealEstate.com. You can also go to our website. It's CashflowSavvy.com, and Savvy is with two Vs like Victor. Um, I'm, very, uh, I'm very approachable, so to speak, and if you send me an email, it might take me 24 to 48 hours, but I will respond to you. I think Glenn can attest to that. Yes, it's very good. Thank you for your time, Mercedes. I really appreciate you coming back. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, and if there's anything you need, Glenn, I am truly an email away. I know. Thank you. Have a great day.